Well, I'm recording now. Yep. Well, holding this camera is Mike Sanchez. Yours truly. I'm here at home in Spain in the section of my home where I've got a lot of music, where I've got a lot of CDs, I've got a lot of vinyl. I've got guitars hanging up on this wall. Let's come a little bit closer here and have a look. What have we got? I never threw away any of my guitars, so I've got everything. Most of them are hanging up here on the wall. My old early 70s Antoria semi-acoustic that you'll read all about in the, in the new book to be released in a few months' time by the great Michael Madden. Uh, a few acoustic guitars. It's always nice to have them to strum around. As I did before I started getting seriously into the piano, I'd get an acoustic guitar and just learn how to play all the songs that Elvis Presley had learnt at Sun Studio. That's right, Mama, etc., etc. And uh, here we are. I've got some equipment that I still need to understand quite a lot of things. How to... Uh, where are we here? Oop, there's a bunch of CDs here. I think all of that in front of you is vintage rhythm and blues. I've got so much other stuff as well. Ska, Latin... Where are we now? We've got some photos hanging up here. First of all, I must introduce you to the uh, the girls in my they're my staff at Dupin. Ha ha! It was a photo that I had taken on the on the road with Bill Wyman's Rhythm Kings, and these were the staff at the, a concert somewhere in southern Italy. And uh, marvelous photo, all of them beautiful, and me in the middle. Uh, I was very happy when that photo got taken. What have we got here? There's a this was one of the evenings at the Royal Albert Hall, one of the, uh, uh, what was it, a big charity event. Over in the corner on the Hammond organ is Georgie Fame, Mark Knopfler to the right, Martin Taylor, jazz guitar virtuoso, round the back of Albert Lee as they both play the guitar together, Terry Taylor, Sam Brown, Beverly Skeet and myself looking in on them there on the side of the piano. Above that I've got a wonderful memory of the only time that I met the great legendary Richard Berry, the man who recorded the classic Louie Louie, which years later became a massive hit for the Kingsmen. This is him at the 100 Club. I managed to have a photo taken with him. It was an honor to have met the guy. Um, he came over, I remember hearing... After decades of not seeing a penny of uh, of um, money from having written the hit Louie Louie, eventually he received the royalties for it. And he celebrated by getting on the Queen Elizabeth ship, going across the Atlantic and doing a little tour. He didn't want to fly, apparently, so he just took his time and made a huge holiday out of out of everything, thanks to the royalties from Louie Louie. What have we got here? Some assorted photos. That's one that Andy Sylvester, um, my mentor, that he took because he was always into cameras, takes some great photos. Over the years there's been many things. This one might be a bit blurred. That's me at the 100 Club in my soaking red suit. Here there's a big one. This one's a photograph from Gordon Ayres. Um, I've got a an old shore mic there. Yeah, I'm running out of things. This is a complex photo. It looks like many, many people on stage. That was me in Molde, Norway. It was a New Year concert, and I was at the front in a white suit. And there was a it was a huge band and an orchestra and a chorus of of children. It was a. I think I was singing some embarrassing Elvis Presley song at that moment when that photo was taken. But hey, hey, there is a lineup that I tried to put together and successfully did so for a little while. Myself, the extraordinaires, and amongst them the beautiful, wonderful Imelda. That was a lineup known as the Mike Sanchez Rhythm and Blues Review. We did a few festivals in England, especially in, in Europe. We did a few things, and people did hear about us, but we never got to record the albums that I plan to record, which is a real shame. Imelda now is such a household name. Everyone's really proud of her. She's got years of great career ahead of her. 
extraordinaires unfortunately are no longer our rest in peace in, in peace Roy Hall this is at Ronnie Scott's Birmingham when Charles Brown the legendary Charles Brown who was such an inspiration to Ray Charles in the early 50s Charles Brown played there for a week um, at Ronnie Scott's Birmingham I went to see him I think five out of six nights amazing wonderful man great great musician this is myself in the middle with Andy Sylvester and on the one side on the right side Mick Fleetwood this is at the Fleetwood LA Blues Club when we played there for a month back in the when was this about 1989 1990 I can't remember now myself and Andy Sylvester I once again mentioned that Andy's been my mentor for many years he was a big influence to me and thanks to his huge record collection and wonderful taste in music I became the person that I became on stage that's us at the Royal Albert Hall with Eric Clapton on his knees we had him on his knees that evening yeah this is before we were about to go on stage and while he was casually waiting to go on and do his one of his blues nights I think that might have been with Buddy Guy and Robert Cray <clears throat> What do we have here? I have a band um, called The Big Six. It was put together by Ricky Braun, the drummer Ricky Braun, with Anders Janes on, on, on stick bass, and uh, the wonderful Pat Rayford, and my guys Al Nichols and Nick Lunt at that time. They were working with me as well. Fun memories of the little time I had with The Big Six. That's me with the extraordinaires. Uh, this is a very nice photo. One that a lot of people go, wow, that's you and Paul McCartney. Yes, it is. We're both sharing the same mic. He was doing the singing because he chose to sing one of the songs, Lucille, and he sang it in the original key of Little Richard. And that's something I cannot do. If I sing a Little Richard song, I'm, I'm about four tones lower so that I can sing it. Just like Elvis Presley, or oh, unfortunately Pat Boone would sing something in C that little Richard was screaming up in the key of F. <laughs> mm, we do our best. <laughs> Another nice memorable shot of the, the Rhythm and Blues review of myself, uh, Andy Sylvester, Al Gare, Mark Morgan. Mark, who's been with me now 20 years, 20 years and two weeks, counting each day. Oh. Rest in peace, Little Willie Littlefield. Uh, what a wonderful influence he was to me. During the 80s, we had the pleasure of touring with Little Willie. This photograph on the, on, on the left of me. And um, Big J McNeely, one of the, the honker of honkers who helped create the meaning of rock and roll as early as 1949 when he stole the show from the Lionel Hampton Orchestra. And from there on, he honked his way through, and he's still, he's about 87 years old now, and he's still honking just as bad, and he's still hustling just as bad now as he ever was. It's what a pleasure to have met these people. Ah, what else is there? Oh, a poster from a gig with Ray Collins, who's a lovely friend of mine. Ray Collins, who lives in Cologne, Germany. Ray writes some great songs. He wrote some songs for an album for his band and he decided that I'd probably be able to sing them better and he invited me over and I thought that was a real honour and a lovely gesture for, for Ray to ask me to sing. One song in particular um, which ended up being my dad's favourite song just before my dad passed away. That was the one thing that he said, son, this is a f my favourite song that you've ever recorded. And um, um, Half Blind was the title of the song. Where else do we go? There's an assortment of photos everywhere throughout the house. I like taking these photos. Sometimes at the end of a show I take photos of a crowd. I have many of these. I should put them all on the internet because some people on my Facebook and wherever will recognize themselves at the front. <laughs> what else is there? Uh, this is a good lineup of 
the band I was in for 15 years, the Big Town Playboys. This is around a time, this was a promotional photograph from the, uh, the Jeff Beck Crazy Legs album. We needed some photos taken for the album cover and also current ones of the band at the time. From left, Ian Jennings, Leo Green on tenor sax, myself, Nick Lunt on baritone. Kneeling down is Clive Deemer, who later joined um, Portishead. Portishead um, was, I believe, created by Adrian Utley. He's the last guy on the right there. And um, this was 1993, and then by 94, the band changed, and Mark Morgan came in on drums, and um, Adrian went on to create Portishead. Clive Deemer, in the meantime, when he wasn't with Portishead, he was also doing the drum and bass hit album, Ron Ronnie Size Represent. Later went on to play as well with Dr. John, did a few years with Robert Plant, and um, he's been everywhere. I, he was recently with Radiohead, now he's got his own jazz combo, playing the jazz festivals around Europe. So, good on Clive Deemer, one of the great drummers. There he is. Ah. <laughs> what else is there? Well, the rest of the house, many things I'll entertain you with another time. What have we got? Ah, this one here, this was Jeff Beck's wedding party down at his house in Kent. Uh, to the left, if you can see, Ian Jennings on the bass, next to him, Paul McCartney, next to him, me, playing the piano sideways, I don't know how I was doing that, next to me, Jeff Beck, next to Jeff is Andy Sylvester, and with his back slightly towards us is Jimmy Page, and on drums around the back there somewhere, you can see Mark Morgan, and I think it was the Yardbirds drummer was on there as well, there were two drum kits. Anyway, a very memorable evening. So... Anyway, what else? Oh yeah, my four years with Bill Wyman's Rhythm Kings. This is a rough little photo. I need more more photos because we had some. We were involved in some good photo sessions with the band, and I never never got a copy of any of those. But there's Albert Lee, Martin Taylor, Janice Hoyt, uh, Graham Broad on drums, Bill Wyman, Georgie Fame. What a pleasure spending time with Georgie Fame. We had about three years pretty much on tour together. I feel like I learned a lot about music and discipline and also how to learn. I had to drink a little drop of whiskey in the back of the tour bus. Beverly Skeet. There's Terry Taylor, Bill's friend. He's Bill's friend because he's smaller than Bill. <laughs> Bill would say that every night on stage. Nick Payne on baritone sax. Nick... He started his popular life uh, with Paul Young's Q-tips in the 70s. But from there on, he did a lot of work with people like the legendary Lonnie Donegan, the King of Skiffle, as well as with Mark, uh, sorry, with Frank Mead, alongside Nick there, the two of them, Frank Mead and Nick Payne, they ended up being the, what was it called, the Midnight Horns? The horn section for Gary Moore on the two big blues albums he did. And then they've been constantly in Bill Wyman's Rhythm Kings since then, as well as many other things. Beverly Craven, Frank Mead, I remember him on those albums. Ah, this is the Rockets. This is a publicity promo, promo photo of the Rockets taken probably around 1983, about a year or a year and a half before we started Big Town Playboys. And that's me sat in the center, Ian Jennings with his double bass, and Tim Bean, the drummer. And we're sat in a 1957 Chrysler Imperial that was at the time owned by Robert Plant. And he allowed us to get in the car like that with our shoes on. I think we took our shoes off. We couldn't sit on white leather seats like that. That was a wonderful, wonderful memories of how we started with Rockabilly. And then how we discovered all the blues and rhythm and blues that we've loved dearly throughout our life. This was a gift from Robert at my wedding three months ago. It's lovely of him. Yeah, congratulations Mike and Sarah. Enjoy your days. Robert, 5th of the 6th, 2013. 
I'd love to have seen a gig like this. Jimmy Reed. Wow.